Hey guys, Melissa here. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this ring. You can use faceted stones or cabochons. The band is woven. Both sumac weave and modified sumac weave. All woven together to create a ring. So if you want to see how I made this, just stick around and I'll show you how. All right, so let's get started. I already pre-cut four pieces of 20 gauge sterling silver wire, seven inches long, and that should be plenty to make a ring. I'm going to try to straighten them out as best as I can, nice and straight and sitting next to each other real nice. I'm going to go ahead and clamp them real quick just to keep a hold of them. All right, so first, this is the stone I picked. It's an odd shape amethyst. See, it's got, um, I don't know what you call this cut, but it's kind of a dome. It's got these great facets on top, and then it's got like a kind of a normal culet to the bottom, like a regular faceted stone. So before I start weaving, what I need to figure out is what size of ring I want to make. I gotta pick out the stone, and knowing that, we can figure out how much weaving we need to do. Let me grab a Sharpie here. Sharpies are handy. Let's just make a size 7. This isn't for anybody in particular, so I'm just going to make a size 7. And with a scrap piece of wire, I'm going to figure out the length of weaving I need. So find the 7. If you can see it. My numbers are fading. There it is right there. Decide if you want your stone to lay this way or this way. I think it will look cute this way. Let me flip it over so it's easier to hold. Just take your scrap piece of wire and wrap it around. So I put a bend in it right there. I'm going to cut it and double check it again. All right, let me just give tap tap it down double check might have to take a little bit more off i actually think that's pretty good i want the weaving to hide underneath the stone a little bit i think that's good i'm gonna call it good all right so let's straighten that back out again we got to find the middle of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half and find the middle that way. Next, I'm going to find the middle of my bundle of wires here. That is three and a half inches on either side. I'm going to throw some tape on the end to try to keep these guys in line. Kind of getting out of control. Line up your middle and then mark either side of your guide wire. And those are your starting and stopping points for your weave. All right. And I'm going to use the sumac weave plus modified sumac weave to make this ring band. Last week I did a weaving tutorial on that combination. I'll link that above. But today I'll do the same thing. Last week I used copper. This week I'll use sterling silver. And this is 28 gauge I'm using. I'm going to number my wires from the bottom up. 1, 2, 3, and 4. I'm going to slide my wire in between 1 and 2. And I'm going to anchor it on number 1 about three times here one two and then three i use a guitar pick to smush those down and then the sumac weave i'm going to go up and over number two back down and out between one and two up around two and three back down come out between two and three up around 
three and four. Come on out between three and four, and then around number four once. Mash that down, and then come down some more. Come out between two and three, up around three. Come out between one and two, and go up around two. And then around number one. And repeat that pattern. I'm going to make three passes, or two and a half, I should say. Goes really quick. Go around the top once. And then work your way back down again. Two whole passes. Gonna go back up and then start my modified sumac weave. So you're gonna go around number four once, come down out between two and three and up around three, and do the same between one and two and then around two, when you come down, you're going to come out between one and two again, and then you're going to go up around two and three. And I think I'll do that five times and see where we're at. So I'm going to come out between two and three, round three, and down out between one and two, and around two, out between one and two again, and around two and three. So that's two passes. Do that again. Three passes. Well, four passes. Five passes. So I'm going to kind of eyeball it. Three sumac weaves is about three millimeters. My set of five, like each pass is about a millimeter. So I got three millimeters, five millimeters, and I've got, let's see if I do another three. Yeah, I think that'll work out. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to do another set of three. So I went around one and two, come out between one and two, went around two and three, come out between two and three. And went up around three and four and went around four once and then back down again just like the last time Okay, back up again. And I'm going to do another five of the modified sumac. So that's one right there. Two, three, four, five. 
Let's see. We'll do another three regular sumac. See where that gets us. We might have to do a super long line of modified sumac. One and two, up around two and three, up around three and four, and around four. And back down again. I'm going to flare that out a little bit so it's easier. I usually do that initially, but I didn't. Move my clamp over. Back down again. And then back up. One. All right. Okay. So we're a little far away from the center. I'm going to smoosh that down, figure out how many modified sumac waves it takes to get to the center, and then do the exact amount on the other side. So let's start. Down and around number three, down and around number two, and then back out and around two and three. Got to keep them smushed. Three. Got another one in. Two. Let me take my clamp off of them so I know they're really super smashed. That's three. I think one more and we'll be at center. Let's do four more before we go ahead and repeat the regular sumac. Put the clamp back on so I have something to hold on to. One. Two. Three, and remember you can do your pattern however you see fit for your ring band. You can even do two passes of the regular sumac, doesn't really matter. You can do any type of sequence you would want to do. This is just what I thought would look kind of cool. Of course, if you're not confident with weaving yet, I would definitely start off with some copper. It's softer and much easier to work with. Sterling silver can get kind of springy and stiff. Next time I purchase weaving wire, I think I'm going to get pure silver. I think it's a little softer. Another set of sumac. Five 
And then three more passes of the regular and we should be all done. And instead of going down again, I'm going to go around the top one, number four, a few times. Pretty symmetrical. We got this in the middle. That's the longest. We have a long part right there and then everybody else. So I want a symmetrical. Push all that down. Of course, it wants to spring out again. Okay. Hm. I didn't press record. So what I was saying, I compressed my weave down because it keeps wanting to spring and I'm starting to curve my wires out one by one, one at a time to the side. I'm gonna take my tape off on this side. I'm gonna cut this. I don't think I need to continue. Okay, now I'm getting in my way. So, compress your weave down to the other side and start bending your wires one by one out to the side on this side. Make sure it has a nice curve in them. You want them to look pretty similar. There's a back side and a front side. Make sure you know where your front side is. Grab your mandrel, find your ring size, start wrapping around. Got my rawhide mallet here. I can use that to tap it into shape. There's my seven again. My wires are crossing. You don't want that. You want your wires to curve up to touch each other. That's why you want them curving all the same. You want them to lay nice, but you just want them to touch each other because you're going to weave those together too. You can flip it around as well. And just work them until they're pretty equal. You're at the right size. The wires are just touching each other. Even Try your stone in there. Looks pretty good, huh? Okay, so when you got all your wires shaped, you're satisfied with how they're laying and, and your stone fits in there nicely and won't fall through or anything, you're going to weave both sides with like three, three passes of the sumac weave. That shouldn't take too long. I'm going to treat this, you know, the same as the other weave, you know, the four wires, bottom wire being number one. I'm going to start it off, anchoring it like three times. All right, get up there by the others, get them close together because we're going to 
weave them well the same as always we're gonna go up around one and two now between one and two up around two and three so they're next to each other be careful not to have them overlap come out between go around three and four and around four push that down make sure everybody's laying correctly and come back down again And then back up, one and two, two and three, three and four, and back down again. Make sure you have your wires all straight and even and laying nice before you attempt to weave. So I'm gonna go back up again. Just back up and, and then tie it off. Bring that down nice and tight and do the other side. I just flipped it so I'm not upside down. some pliers to condense this weave get it on the mandrel get it back to the size you want it you might have to pull the wires out a little bit even out the wires and smash your weave down a bit to get it to the right size and again you can push your weave in and bring your wires out to kind of lock that weave in place I'll pull them out you yeah, see how that's moving Make sure everybody's even. Pull it a little tighter. All right, break time. Okay, when you got your weave compacted, everything even where you want it, where you can lock your stone in and bring the sides up. I need some pliers too to help you out. Sterling silver really gets hard to work with after messing with it for a little bit. So I'm going to take my round nose pliers and kind of roll it a little bit. Help me get into place. And these wires are what are going to hold the stone in place for you. You're going to bring the wires back down the band here and lay them next to each other. Like that. And just going to go back and forth. And this is the tedious part. This might take you the most time. So I went through and I made sure everybody's even. And the same thing here. I brought these wires down next to each other because they're going to be woven. My stone is still moving around. So I'm hoping once I get these woven and I start tying down these wires, we'll get this stone in place. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here. Go around a couple two, three times. Try not to misshape in my wire here. I spent so much time shaping them into place. Go around one and two, come out between one and two. Go around two and three. Just 
and then goes up around three and four. It's hard when everything's so close together. Same weave though, just a little more complicated. that helps secure the stone a little bit. Do this side and see where we're at. That should be all the weaving.
All right, guys, here's how we turned out. You saw how I polished out all the nicks, and then I threw it in the tumbler for a little bit. Made it nice and shiny, so not too shabby. All right, so that's it for me, but I do have a question of the week. I'm curious, how long have you been wire wrapping? I've been wire wrapping since about 2005, 2006, somewhere around there. So just let me know in the comments if you're brand new or have you been doing this for a long time like I have. And if you like this tutorial, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.